um, first of all, uh, thank you very much once again um, uh, for the opportunity, uh, Brianna and uh, the uh, Greta Latrop Laurel Valley Chamber of Commerce, the members and the community uh, members from the from the, uh, the chamber. You are more than welcome, and thank you very much for attending this this presentation today. Um, because it's uh, a presentation of two products, I usually do one. I will have to, unfortunately, um, you know, run it a bit at faster pace because your time is also of essence, and I do not want to take a lot of your time. Uh, so generally, I would go in a bit more details than how I'm going to present today. Uh, but I will still try and do the justice. Um, if you had any questions, because you know a majority of audience, you will not be able to, um, you know, speak on the microphone. So when you have questions on your left hand side panel, you can see that there is a Q and A area. You type your questions. I will answer all your questions as they come at the end of the presentation. Um, you know, if I have already not covered it and if I've covered it. So, you know, as you hear my presentation and if there is anything specific to your mind, you can just start typing over there. I'm not able to see that screen when I'm in a presentation mode, but I will go back ultimately over there and then I will answer the question when we come to that session. So the objective is to uh, present uh, the GLLV chambers to forthcoming uh, tour programs, and they are both beautiful. Uh, the first one is uh, Portugal, which is Discover Portugal, uh, which is departing on April 20th. And the other one is Magical Egypt, which is going later in the year in fall. And we'll talk about it. And I hope, sincerely hope that uh, the patrons will will be able to understand and comprehend, you know, the the every tour, every knowledge and the information about the tour and of the destination and in the country that I'm going to provide. And you will be, uh, you know, easily able to book this trip and happily rather uh, at a very, very attractive prices that we are offering you. The agenda is going to be the two products, which is Portugal and Egypt. So and I will start go one after the other. So because Portugal is going first, I will speak about Portugal in the first part. And then I will go to Egypt. But in both the presentation, the order will be maintained in the sense that I will speak about the facts and knowledge of the country, then about the famous food and what are the countries known for, then some of the tour highlights, including uh, including inclusions and what is not included, uh, a brief narration of both the tours, which is Egypt and Portugal, uh, uh, one slide about us in this travel, who we are, uh, some general knowledge about how to book, uh, a little bit about passport, visa, health, and currency. Currency is not included today because, again, um, you know, I do not want to exceed more than 40, 45 slides. Uh, but, you know, you can ask me the question and perhaps, you know, since the audience is not too big, I will answer your questions in an email later on. And there is also a short a destination video on Egypt. Uh, because Portugal, I don't have anything less than two minutes, and I did not want to do anything like five, six minutes. So, um, you know, I have an Egypt, which is just about a minute and a half. And then there will be a QA, uh, like I said in the beginning. So, let's begin with Portugal. As you can see, that this is a country uh, which is the extreme uh, west, uh, southwest corner of Europe. Um, it is a semi presidential republic. Uh, its capital is Lisbon, uh, as you can see over here, and um, the population as in uh, 2018 was 10.3 million, the last census. The population consists of 81% Roman Catholics and 4% other Christians. Then there is also other 4% of other people like the Jews and the Muslims and, you know, no religion kind of people also. The official language is obviously Portuguese. Uh, the money which is operated or used in um, in Portugal is Euro. Um, it's one of the highly literate population of the world with a literacy rate of 96.1%. Um, it uh, covers an area of 35,556 square miles 
which is approximately 79.3% of the size of Pennsylvania, or same size as Indiana for that matter. Um, it is, you know, has got the um, Atlantic Ocean uh, on the west. Sorry, this is not, this is about Egypt. So there's no Red Sea over here, my apologies. You got Atlantic Ocean on the on the left, and it's a, it has got a long coastline, uh, 497 miles to be precise. Uh, it borders also Spain on the east, um, and the natural resources. And the reason I'm covering the natural resources is because I am doing presentation to a chamber of commerce member, so you may have some commercial interest, and therefore I'm just including this information that it has got the natural resources of fish forest, uh, which is cork, predominantly cork. 70% uh, of the world's cork forest is, is actually in Portugal. Iron core, copper, zinc, tin, tungsten, uh, silver, gold, uranium, marble, clay, gypsum, salt, um, and hydropower. The GDP of the country is 314 billion US dollar, and it's per capita. And this is, of course, pre-COVID figures, because you know we do not have any figure after the COVID. Uh, the the pre, per capita is thirty thousand five hundred dollars, and the growth, unfortunately, owing to COVID, has been a minus zero to five in last year, uh, which is um, uh, due to COVID again. Continuing on, some of the interesting facts about Portugal are that you know, uh, with its beautiful cities, the historic landmarks, beaches, religious sites that it has to offer. In 2019, I'm not talking about 2020 because as we all know that 2020 was almost non-existent in calendar for all of us, you know, so it's 2019. Um, the country had 27 million visitors, um, you know, going as tourists in that country, uh, making one of very, very popular place to go. Um, generally a very safe country. As a matter of fact, you know, and again, in 2020, the Global Peace Index gave it a third safest country in the world, though, you know, when the tourists increase, there is some pickpocket incident. So I would, you know, uh, caution uh, people who are going that when you are in the crowd, you know, just be careful with your, you know, your uh, uh, your wallets and things like that, you know, try and keep them safe or do not carry, uh, you know, valuables or, you know, a lot of things in your thing or just keep them safe, you know, keep them in a place, you know, where it's not, it's pickpocket is not somebody who's robbing you. He will be able to take an opportunity if you provide them one, otherwise, you know, it just doesn't happen. As, uh, you know, first global empire of the world and one of the longest lived uh, colonial power, um, half of the new world, you know, once upon a time belonged to Portugal and not too far distance past. Uh, it was until about, you know, 18th century that half of the new world actually belonged to Portugal. Um, with 236 million native uh, language speaker, the Portuguese language speaker, it is an official language of nine countries in the world, even today. Uh, with same borders, you know, the country has been maintaining the same borders since 1139. Uh, it is the oldest country in Europe. So it has not changed in the sense of its borders, uh, you know, or its size or something. So it's, it's one of the oldest in Europe. Also, um, there is a bookstore which was established and still operating until today. Back in 1732, it's called Bertrand uh, Bookstore in Lisbon. And perhaps, you know, when you will go uh, on a city tour of Lisbon, the guide should be able to point it out from your coach when you're going. So it is one of the oldest bookstore operating in the world, not only in Europe. Um, with largest cork forest, it produces 70% of world's cork exports. Um, in 1290, the University of Coimbra, where you are going, uh, you established in 1290, it makes it the one of the oldest universities in Europe. Um, also, it has got the uh, second longest bridge in Europe, uh, which is called Vasca de Gama Bridge in Lisbon, which is 7.6 mile long. Uh, until uh, 2018, when Russia built a bridge in uh, between Russia and Crimea, uh, which is called the Crimean Bridge, uh, this used to be the longest bridge in the world, but now it is the second largest, you know, uh, second longest um, after 2018. 
The coastline that it has, and it boasts is 497 miles, and it makes it one of the um, you know top surfers uh, spot in the world. A lot of surfers, you know, love it. Uh, I'm going to speak about a bit more, you know, when we'll come to that slide a bit later. Um, back in, um, uh, you know, some time ago uh, in the 17th century, Lisbon was hit by one of the most powerful earthquakes, which, uh, you know, uh, recorded, uh, the record was uh, nine magnitude on Raito. Um, and it, there was a big, uh, you know, destruction of the city, a huge population died, 80% of the buildings collapsed and things like that. But since then, you know, city has built itself and there has been no incidents. Um, there is one of the popular music from the country is called the Fado, Fado music. Uh, it is intangible Portuguese cultural heritage by UNESCO and it originated in Lisbon, which is the capital of Portugal. Um, though this country was heavily involved in the Atlantic slave trade from a place called um, Algarve in, um, you know, in the middle of the country, uh, it was the first colonial power to also ab abolish the slavery. So yes, they were very high, uh, you know, when it came to slavery, but then, uh, you know, they also were the first nation to abolish it. Um, Let's move on again. Um, some of the must try Portuguese food, uh, there is actually more than 1215, but I could only, you know, bring you some of the uh, real popular one and some of my favorite also. So there is the, uh, the Portuguese codfish, um, you know, which the, uh, the uh, image is the first one over here. There's also the caldo word, the soup, which is a soup over here. Grilled sardine, sardines is one of the you know, very popular uh, things to do. As a matter of fact, people put the sardine in between their, you know, freshly baked uh, uh, breads and they eat it. Uh, it's very delicious. Uh, this is the pasta de nata, which is nothing but the egg, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, what do you call them? Uh, uh, there's a name for it, but anyhow, okay. I will get it later. Looks like a uh, yeah, it is. It, it is a tart. Yes, it's the egg tart. Yeah, very popular egg tart. And as a matter of fact, if you have Portuguese, you know, restaurants or, or you know, places of eatery in U.S. and Canada, this will be one of the essentials that they will present to you in their dessert. Also, you get the uh, this special sandwich, which is, which is made of, you know, ham and some meat and sausages and grilled cheese on the top, which is called the uh, Frank Kishna sandwich. I do not want to misspell or uh, mispronounce it. Chicken peri peri is uh, one of the world famous thing. As a matter of fact, uh, you must be having the restaurant called Nando's, uh, which is all around the world, including Canada and US. And they, uh, you know, bring the taste out of Portugal, which is called the peri peri. With the only difference is that when it comes to North America, we spell it as P-E-R-I instead of P-I-R-I, like they pronounce it peri peri over there. Also, uh, they do the very popular octopus dish over here, uh, which is called polvo something, uh, lagairo, which I understand in Portuguese, it must be meaning the octopus. And you can see the octopus right in the middle over there. Portugal is known for a number of things and I'll quickly go over them. So food uh, in which there is, you know, one of some of the best olives along with Spain. Uh, cheeses, roast meats, fishes, and breads. Uh, of course, it's uh, the, the the port wine comes from there. And as you can see the picture right here in the middle, uh, it's the world famous port. It is known for its beaches. And I have given you two pictures of some of the beaches and some of the architecture and design. And of course the food, as you can see the picture here. It's also known for architecture and design. And this is, you know, um, a, a modern architecture over here. This is an old building on the left over here, also known for music, uh, which is the father music. I spoke about it and the lady singing, and it's usually played with a guitar uh, in the background, as you can see. It's also very popular with art, uh, which is museums and exhibitions. So they do not have like grand museums like Paris or Madrid, but they have small exhibitions and museums, but they are very detailed and they are world famous. Um, Nazare is one place, you know, where people go for surfing and competition. And as a matter of fact, you know, this place uh, can get, get waves up to about 100 feet. And um, as you can see, there is a surfer over here. The world records have been set uh, in Nazaria. 
where somebody did about 74 feet and then back in about three years ago somebody again set a record of surfing on a on a wave which was about 80 feet uh, high so that is quite a record it only happens in this country it's also known for uh, the city of Lisbon, it's a city of seven hills, as they call it popularly. Uh, it's known for the city of Porto, which is the second largest city, and Porto's got a lot of architecture and historic center. Known for soccer, and everybody knows this figure, unless if you are not in soccer, this is Cristiano Ronaldo, and every it's a world famous, one of the most famous Hackens in the world. Uh, also, it is now known for uh, the Ectard, which is called Pastel de Nata, uh, uh, in Portugal, known for uh, the tile work, and you can see where my mouse is moving just now. Um, there are it's called the Azulejo tiles works, and you can see that they do it with the design and also with some of the painting work, and they are very popular for that uh, because they produce a lot of cork. So they also have a lot of cork item, and you'll be surprised that they actually make purses and shoes and you know wallets and things of the sort you, you have the very nice shops that you can go around country is also known for golf courses Ooh. coming to our tour the discover portugal tour with uh, a glv chamber uh, will be doing a, a, an itinerary of pittsburgh lisbon abidos nazare batalha Coimbra, avero uh, porto fatima lisbon and back to pittsburgh it is an eight-day tour, which will depart on April 20th of next year. And it is priced at $1,999, which is an incredible price per person. Uh, that includes what I'm going to show you in the next slide. And there is also an early bird discount. So if you book this trip by July 31st, you will get a discount of $100, and you will be able to book it for just about $1,899. On August 1st, though, the price will go back to $1,999. And when I say book does not mean that you have to pay the un entire $1,899. You can actually engage your trip by just paying $500 deposit. And then you have until 90 days before departure to pay the balance. Furthermore, both the trips, the Portugal and the Egypt trip, will remain fully refundable until 90 days before departure that means if you put your deposit and for some reason though we know that covid is going to become history pretty soon hopefully touch wood uh, but let's say for some reason you know the tour did not operate you know covid or no covid until 90 days before departure you are safe and your money will be reimbursed furthermore if you pay 500 dollars today and you pay the deposit you do not have to pay the balance until 90 days before so you have two choices you can either wait until right until 90 days before departure and pay the balance, which will be $1,399, or you can pay an installment of two, three, four hundred dollars whatever suits you on a monthly basis until you arrive 90 days before departure, which will happen on January the 19th of 2022 for this trip. Should you want to stay a single person in a room, that means you are not sharing because this price is on double, double occupancy basis. A uh, single person uh, per person supplement is going to be $645. That means you have to add $645 on top of $1899 in order to remain by yourself in the room. What does it include? It includes round trip airfare from Pittsburgh, six nights accommodation at the hotels that I'm going to speak about, daily breakfast, buffet breakfast, arrival and departure transfers in, in, uh, uh, in Portugal, private deluxe air-conditioned transportation, service of English-speaking guide, tours and sightseeing as per the detailed itinerary, which you have the brochure, both in electronic form, and also, um, you know, uh, Brian, I might have printed a few for you. Uh, entrance fees as per the detailed itinerary, air taxes and fuel surcharges, and local applicable taxes, except the city tax of Porto and Lisbon, which is very nominal. Uh, I think, I, I don't know exactly, but I think it's under five euros. That has to be paid locally in Porto and Lisbon because no, you cannot pay them in advance. So that has to be paid over there. What does it not include? Items of personal nature, uh, tips and gratuities, local city taxes in Porto and Lisbon, as I said, luggage fees may apply and vary by carrier. At this point in time, we are, uh, you know, you are allowed one piece of 23 kilo. I don't know, um, you know, how much would it come to? But 
since we do not know how post covid scene is going to be uh, you know we don't know if the airlines is going to impose you know some some baggage fees that's why i'm being careful and i'm just saying that it may apply but at this point in time as we are talking about one piece of checked in and one piece carry on luggage plus you know your laptop or small thing is allowed that you can carry optional tours and we only got two uh, two in this one which we'll speak about they are not included in this price uh, travel insurance is not included and um, we highly recommend that you buy your own travel insurance visa fees is not included uh, which is not applicable for uh, you know the u.s passport holders uh, to go to portugal and any other item which i have not included in here if there was a flight which flew non-stop from pittsburgh to lisbon which doesn't exist but if there was one it would have taken you 11 hours to fly non-stop from pittsburgh to lisbon and um one how we will do your flight is you know approximately about four months before departure we will fix you either one of the european airlines or one of the standard american airlines like you know pittsburgh most probably is going to be delta or united so either we hop into one of the eastern seaboard uh, you know gateway like maybe new york or you know could be washington i don't know whatever it will be or we may take a european carrier and we may hop into for example into paris or into london and then fly back to lisbon one of the two so it'll be decided but what we guarantee you that we will give you either the american or european standard airline with full service let's continue with the tour so your first day you have departed on day two you arrive which is going to be thursday you arrive in lisbon you will be met by your tour guide outside the immigration area and you'll be transferred to the hotel and you will do the overnight in lisbon so obviously you'll arrive in the am hours most probably and you have the day at leisure and there's a lot of things to do in lisbon that you will uh, that you can do and you can look into the brochure again i'm not going in details like i explained in the beginning because i'm doing two product presentation i do not want to take a lot of your time so you know i will leave all these details for you to look into the brochure so, and this brochure, by the way, and the details are also available on the website of uh, the GLLV uh, chamber. And you can find out from uh, Brianna uh, how to look at it. So you can look at all this. Furthermore, there is also a link which is provided to you, uh, which is an exclusive online link. And that link has also got complete details. So for now, I will just go at a fast pace. So day three, you will have a breakfast. Breakfast is included on a daily basis. And you will do a tour of Lisbon afternoon is at leisure or you can take one of our optional tour which is offered and i said the only two tours offer so this is an electric bike tour which takes bit between three and two four hours uh, it requires minimum two people from your group to book it it's only 25 dollars per person it departs at 2 p.m and it goes from martin Morris square which will not be far from your hotel but the transfer to that square is not included so you can either uber it or just walk it uh, so what is the tour? This is a guided tour to get familiarized with Lisbon in a fun and ecologic, e ecolo ecological way. Ideal for touring the hills of Lisbon, the tour will be provided by a guide. So a guide is included. What hotel are we staying? So I have a mix of the Lisbon pictures over here and the hotel picture. So in Lisbon, we will either stay at the Mercury Hotel and the picture is here, or we will sit, uh, stay at the Trip Caparica Hotel the picture is here. The picture that included of the hotel room belongs to this hotel, which is the Trip Caparica. Mercure is a very famous chain uh, of Europe, and they are they are a good hotel. It's a three, it's a four star hotel, you know, uh, all along the trip that we will maintain. Some of the other images that we see are from the city of Lisbon. On day four, five, and six. Uh, on day four, which is a Saturday, we will begin after the breakfast in a coach and we will start heading north. Your first stop is going to be Obidos. Uh, then we will continue on to Nazare. Uh, we'll, the tour will then continue on to Batala uh, with a stop in Fatima. But Fatima will be actually done in more detail on your way back. So here there will be just a stop for, for a while and then you will finally arrive in a, in a town called Coimbra where you will be staying overnight in Coimbra. On day five, which is Sunday, Again, breakfast, and we will depart to Aveiro, uh, which is also considered considered to be the Venice of Portugal. Uh, we will continue on to Porto, the second most important city and a beautiful, beautiful city. Uh, you will be transferred in Porto to the hotel and you will spend overnight in Porto. So you will be spending two nights in Porto 
uh, first two nights in Lisbon, one night in Coimbra, and then two nights in Porto here. Uh, and I will show you the picture of the hotel in my next flight. Um, 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 also, I, on day six, which is Monday, you will do the sightseeing tour in the morning and afternoon as a leisure to explore on your own. And again, if you look into our brochure, we have suggested a number of things that you can do uh, without going far away from your hotels in this beautiful town and city called Porto. There is an optional tour though that we're offering on day six, uh, which is called the Tuk Tuk Tour uh, and the Six Bridge Boat Ride. It, it's about under two hours, minimum two people required, and it costs you $40 per person if you want to do it. Again, the meeting point is Largo dos Loyos and the transfer is not included. It departs at 4 p.m. from that place. What does it do? It discovers Porto through a tuk-tuk ride. Uh, what is a tuk-tuk? The three-wheeler, uh, you know, um, uh, which is operated in Asia, uh, in the city, and it has got a one-hour boat ride on the exceptional Douro River, which is a very, very popular river of Europe. Uh, you will learn about the winery history in Porto and its exceptional wines also on the strip. Here are some of the pictures of Lisbon and Abidus for you. I will just leave it here for 10 seconds and I will move on. Some pictures of Nazare, Batala and Coimbra. And this is, as you can see over here, the waves which happened in Nazare and the people on this where my mouse is now moving, you can actually stand at the top over here and the waves come and if you are lucky you will be able to see waves anywhere between 50 feet to 60 70 80 feet you know high waves that, that come at this place called lazare which is also very very popular with the surfers of the world it's one of the surf capital of the world uh, the beaches are beautiful as you can see over here in also nazare and batala um they the these pictures are of coimbra which i which people call the Venice of, uh, of Portugal, and as you can see that you can actually do uh, the Venice style boat rides over here, and there are two pictures included, and some of the rest of the pictures are from the city of Porto, as you can see them. The hotels that we are gonna use in uh, Porto and Coimbra, uh, it'll be either the Central Park Hotel, uh, which is this picture over here, and uh, in Coimbra, we're gonna use the hotel trip. Now I cannot distinguish exactly which hotel is which, but this picture of the, um, you know, um, um, of the uh, reception area or the uh, area over here is definitely from the hotel uh, Central Park, which is in uh, Porto. And the these two pictures are from either of the hotel, I cannot distinguish. Uh, and not necessarily your room, but this is an actual picture of the hotel room where we are providing the accommodation and just to show you what is the accommodation on day seven and eight uh you will be doing a breakfast again in porto and go to fatima this time you're going to stop in fatima which is counted amongst the largest centers for mariano worship uh it's a very religious place in europe you know a lot of people actually go especially the catholics you know they get interested in going to fatima um later you will depart back to lisbon uh you will do an overland in lisbon and on day eight which is wednesday you will take a flight back from Lisbon airport and you fly back to Pittsburgh. These are the, um, the pictures of Porto, Fatma and Lisbon, just for you to see. Uh, the, I will point out this picture here is Fatma. This picture is also inside the Cathedral of Fatma. And this also is the, you know, where the bed and the thing is also from the Cathedral of Fatma. The other three picture belong to, uh, you know, Lisbon, one to Coimbra also. Let's move on as I have already spent about 30 minutes. So, uh, you know, I hope that I will be able to do this in the next 25 minutes or so. Um, the next trip that we are doing on October the 4th, which is a nine day tour, it's ex magical Europe, uh, magical Egypt with again, a GLLV chamber, which has also got an option to extend for another five day into Dubai. The trip again uh, is a uh, nine-day tour, which will do Pittsburgh, Cairo, Luxor, Komambo, Itfu, Isna, Aswan, Cairo, and back to Pittsburgh. Now, some of these names may not be very familiar with you, but I'm going to explain them to you as my slides will move on. Again, on this trip, there is a $200 early bird discount, uh, which was if you booked until June 30th. But I think uh, with uh, uh, 
Brian asked permission, we will extend this along with protocol to be booked until July 31st, if you agree with me, Brian, please. Yeah, that's great. All right, okay. So until July 31st, this uh, discount is applicable after hours. On August 1st, this trip, uh, this tour will cost you $3,049. Again, the same rule apply. You do not have to pay the entire money. You only have to pay $500 by, you know, this particular date in order to engage the lower price. And um, the single supplement for this trip is $649 if you wanted to stay by yourself in the room, single occupancy. Egypt, one of the greatest civilization and oldest dynasties of the world dating back to 3200 BC before Christ. The capital of this country is Cairo. The population of this country is 99.4 million. Uh, we do not have uh, the, the census in 2019 and 2020, but I understand it has, it has now crossed 100 million. 90% of the population is Muslims, 10% of Coptic Christians, the official language is Arabic with their own dialect, dialect that you, they speak. The money is called Egyptian pound. The area that the country covers is 386 uh, and 662 square miles, which makes it the 30th largest country in the world. Uh, you can say eight times the size of Ohio. Um, seas, it has got the Mediterranean Sea in the north. Let me move my cursor, as you can see. It's a beautiful coastline up here. Um, the city of Alexandria where Alexander the Great landed and it's there is a great library over here and we are not going there in this trip but I'm just pointing that out it's up here uh, it has got beautiful beaches on the on the north here and on the east as you can see there is the Red Sea and by the way Red Sea is the best snorkeling and the best diving in the world in the world the best um, and that is Red Sea uh, Red Sea is also the place you know where uh, Prophet Moses, for those you know who believe in religion, he crossed over, uh, you know, from um, from Egypt to Sinai, as we know. Um, what it borders on the left is the country of Libya. Lib Libya. Uh, in south, it it has got Sudan, and and on the, Israel is in its northeast. It has got a very important link of the world between Europe and Asia, which is the Swiss Canal, and we all know because they were in a lot of news. Uh, lately, you know, when there was a big ship which was stuck, that happens to be here. I can see Port Suez over here, and this is where the Swiss Canal. So you can go through the Red Sea all the way inside here, and then this canal was dug, and then you come out of the Mediterranean Sea. If you do not do this, what you'll have to do, you'll have to go all the way down to the African Horn, go across Africa and come back. It makes a, sh a difference of eight days of navigation. So it's a very important uh, canal of the world. It has got the longest river of the world of the world. Not that the entire river is in this country, but you know, the northern part of the river is in Egypt at 4,135 miles. Um, you know, it is the longest river and it's also the lifeline of the population of Egypt as in spite of it being a huge country, 95% of the population lives within 15 miles on each side of the bank of the river Nile. Uh, which is just about 5.5% 5, 5 of the land uh, where people live in Egypt across the lifeline of the River Nile. The GDP is uh, 315 billion again back in 2017 or 18. Per capita income is 12,500. So it's a kindly, you know, relatively poor country. The growth back in 2019 was 4.2%. And there is a reason that the Egyptians call the south of the country Upper Egypt. I will leave this, you know, quiz for you guys to answer in my question and answer session. You do not look into Google or just, you know, try and think with me as I do my presentation that why the Egyptians call the southern country Upper Egypt. Uh, the answer is actually in this, um, you know, slide itself, if you think of it. Otherwise, we will answer it to you uh, during the Q&A session. Some interesting facts. Cairo is the capital of the country for 1,000 years. Uh, it will be replaced uh, by a brand new city which will be just 28 uh, miles east from the existing Cairo city. One of the most famous Egyptian figure, which is Cleopatra, uh, actually she was not Egyptian, she was Greek, for your information. Egypt is home to seven UNESCO designated World Heritage Sites. That's a very, very historical country. Uh, it's one of the amazing countries of the world. You know, it's my one of my most favorite for surely. The 365 days calendar that is divided into 12 months was actually invented in Egypt.
In 2019, it had a 12 million tourist uh, visit because they had some problem back in 2010. And then the country had some issues with the tourism. But then there, you know, after that started rebuilding and 2019, it, it went to 12 million. It would have surpassed 15 million in 2020. But again, this year was taken out of our, you know, life. So it not, did not happen. But let's hope next year, uh, even 2021 for that matter, you know, not a lot of tourists are going to go. Though I have sent some, you know, chamber executives who have recently been to, to Egypt, by the way, from Oregon and one from uh, uh, California also. They said we don't mind and they went and they were okay. They, they came back safe and sound. Uh, it is said that what is discovered thus far, when, when I'm talking about, you know, which they dig out the, from the history, you know, the artifacts and the new cities and uh, the mummies and, you know, whatever they bring, it's only 40% has been discovered so far, especially in the Valley of the Kings and the Queen, which is in Luxor, and you're going to go there. Um, and I have seen personally, I was, as a matter of fact, manager of an airline uh, as a you know, regional manager, of, and Egypt was my territory about 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago for a short while. And I have seen camel drivers speaking 10 different languages. That means not only they can speak one or two words, they can actually manage a whole conversation. So, you know, that makes them very smart, you know, young guys, you know, who are camel drivers and they can speak in fluent English and American accent and British accent and Italian and Portuguese and, you know, different, different languages that you, they will be able to speak. One of the best snorkeling and driving is Red Sea and I already spoke about it. Cairo's average population, uh, you know, is 19 million. But you will be surprised that in the daytime, it surges by approximately a million to million and a half. That means a million people come into Cairo in the daytime because of it being the commercial capital. And by the evening, they disperse back and go back to whichever villages or towns nearby that they've come in from. The Grand Egyptian Museum, the largest in the world, uh, dedicated to a single civilization, is located just two kilometers from Great Pyramids when it will be commissioned by the end of 2021. So it is not the existing museum, but this is going to commission the Grand Egyptian Museum, the largest in the world by the end of this year. So next year, when you go by October, you will be visiting this museum. Egypt is the hub of Arabic music, Arabic films, and the drama industry. And a lot of tips are expected, but remind yourself that five Egyptian pounds is only 35 cents US, and people are poor. So sometimes, you know, uh, the best thing is that, you know, you carry small uh, Egyptian bills uh, and, or a lot of, you know, one dollar bill. And this is a tip and it's a very important tip because you will be tipping a lot of people. Uh, but even if you give like 10, uh, you know, Egyptian pounds to somebody, you're only giving 70 cents, you know. And some people, you know, happily, we know that they are trying to con us in their own, you know, innocent way. But we will still be happy to give them, okay, take here 10 pounds and things of the sort. You know, they're just a tip for you. Uh, let's move on. Some of the food. The koftas and kebabs, um, and I can pronounce in their pronunciation because I spent some time in that country. So the kofta and kebab, very, very delicious. As you can see, the picture over here is nothing but their long kebab over here. Something called mashi, and mashi is nothing else. But what happens is they they put some uh, rice with uh, minced meat inside either the uh, you know cabbage or leaves or inside the uh, wine leaves or inside, um, you know, an aubergine or something of the sort. Fool is something which is made of broad bean and almost 90% of the population in the morning, the first thing they have, um, you know, for the breakfast is called full, very, very, uh, you know, full of energy uh, for people. Uh, there is also in, because it has got a lot of seeds, so there's a fish, which is called the Sayadiya fish and that's the way it is made. Omali is one of the popular sweet. Uh, kushri is something and again, you know, hopefully this trip, when Brian is going to lead it, uh, and if I'm not going to go with you guys, then I'm going to tell Brian where to go for Kushri, not very far from the hotel that you're going to stay. And we'll be amazed that for $2 or even less than that, you will be able to eat the plate of this. Uh, this is all vegetarian. So I, it's a beautiful thing. We'll, I'll not take a, a lot of time. And falafel is another thing, which is, again, broad beans and something else. It's fried in the oil. Um, you know, and um, uh, it's very popular. Falafel is something that's also available in a lot of Lebanese shops, if you're familiar with that cuisine in North America. Egypt is known for the Luxor Temple, known for the Karnak Temple, it's known for the St. Catherine Monastery, it's known for the Egyptian Museum. By the way, this picture that is at the bottom over here is of the existing museum, not the new museum that is going to 
uh, to be commissioned by the end of 2021. Also known for the cruise on the Nile, which is again included in your trip, the Abu Simple Temple, which is actually, um, you know, as an optional tour for the Khan Khalili Bazaar, which the picture is over here and which is again included in your trip and uh, the Abydos, uh, you know, uh, which is where we are not going in this trip. Known for the Hanging Church in Cairo. It's known for, of course, the pyramids and the Sphinx, the world renowned, uh, you know, place. And it's also known for something which is called the Cairo Citadel. Uh, so it is actually a mosque of which the picture appears over here. It's called the Muhammad Ali Mosque. And it has got you know, a fort on the other side of this mosque. This is the picture of inside that mosque over here. This picture in the middle over here is the hanging church in Cairo, which is a Coptic church. Also known for the Sultan Hassan Mosque, which is in Cairo. It's known for Mount Sinai. It has got religious value for both the um, for the Jews and the Christians and the Muslims because Moses is followed by all the three religions. And this is where, according to again the religious scripts. And who those for those people who follow it, this is where you know Moses went up to the mountain and, and God spoke to him and he brought the commandments and things of the sort. So it is God. But we are not going there, but it is known for that. Um, also, it is known for the Al Hussein Mosque area. And this picture, as you can see, these are you know some small, small restaurants over here, and they have got these the chairs, you know, which are coming out over here. People sit in this big square, very highly secured, and a lot of tourists and the locals they come along and they eat, you know. Uh, in that square over here. What does it include? A round trip airfare from Pittsburgh, domestic airfare from Cairo to Luxor, and back from Aswan to Cairo. And I'll explain this a bit better when I will come to the last slide. Accommodation on double occupancy basis at the listed hotels or your river cruise, because out of the seven nights, three nights is an hotel, same hotel in Cairo and one four nights you're gonna spend on a river cruise and I'm gonna speak about it. Daily buffet, daily buffet breakfast, uh, full board when you are on your four nights of the river cruise, which includes your breakfast, lunch and dinner. Drinks are not included, but the drinks are damn cheap. Uh, as a matter of fact, you'll be able to get a glass of wine for just about a dollar fifty to dollar seventy. A pop is for just about a dollar. Uh, sometimes you'll find that the drinks are even cheaper. And this is a five star river cruise, by the way. Uh, there are some uh, tours from the cruise ship, which will happen, a lot of them. A meet and greet at Cairo International Airport. That means our representative will actually receive you before you do your immigration. So he will come and meet you inside. Arrival and departure transport, uh, you know, transportation in private air condition, chauffeur driven vehicle, sightseeing and entrance fees as per the itinerary, service of English speaking local guides at every place that you will go. I'll speak about it. All air taxes, fuel surcharges, surcharges, and local applicable taxes. What does it not include? Same as in Portugal. Does not include personal nature items, no tips included, no drinks with, drinks with meal included, and there is an Egyptian visa fee applicable for everybody, which has to be paid in cash. As I'm talking to is $25. We don't know by October 4 next year whether it's going to remain 25 or become 30 but it's not going to go any high. Uh, I know for last 15 years it has remained like between 20 and 25 uh, US dollar and it is only accepted in cash. So this, this is per passport and it's given to you. You have to pay in the bank, your guide will help you. And then, you know, they stamp it on your passport after paying that. Optional tours, and there's only two again over here, which, you know, you can take if you are, or you want to take them. Travel insurance and baggage fee, uh, applying the same principle as spoke. If there was a non-star flight again from Pittsburgh going to Cairo, it would have flown for 14 hours and 30 minutes. Same rules apply in selecting the flights. With the only addition is that we may take Emirates and go via Dubai. Why? Because it has got a Dubai extension, um, you know, optional extension at the end. So we may fly you, uh, you know, from Pittsburgh to Washington or to New York or any other city, you know, from where they operate a non-star flight to Dubai. Then you bring it to Cairo. Uh, that may be another possibility of doing it. Otherwise, we will just fly you into New York and fly you on Egypt Air, for example, to New York, or any of this. A standard carrier. Egypt Air um, is also a standard good airline. Uh, there is nothing that bad about the airline service-wise that I can uh, that I know of. And my background is airline, by the way. On day two, what you are doing, um, you know that uh, you will uh, arrive in Cairo. You will be met by the representative, you will be transferred into, 
your hotel, which is called the Steinerberger Hotel. It's a German chain hotel. It's a four star hotel, but honestly, I consider it personally to be a five star. Rating wise, it's four star, but it is, if I can compare it to the European standard, it is actually five star. You've got the rest of the leisure and you cannot do anything because you are already very tired after 17, 18, 20 hours of flight, you know, flying for this. So you better go and just sleep because next day morning, we are again picking you up from your hotel and taking you to the airport. And we are flying to a city called Luxor. And from Luxor, uh, you will be uh, transferred to the Amwaj Living Livingstone, which is your five star cruise. And that is the picture at the bottom of the cruise from outside. This is a picture of a standard room in the cruise. And it's a beautiful, as you can see over here, this picture on the top, over here is the lounge area of the cruise. This is the actual buffet picture of the cruise. And this is also one of the lounge area on the cruise. So you can see this is a beautiful, beautiful, uh, you know, hotel accommodation or your cruise, whereby you do not have to check in and check out. The cruise or your hotel room is sailing through and you are, once you check in and then you just unpack and then, you know, it starts sailing. Continuing on day three. So once you arrive in the morning, now you're fresh. What will happen is that you will actually, um, you know, uh, go and check in and then you'll embark on a tour of the Luxor and the Karnat temple, which are two very, very important temples of, of Egypt. And these picture over here, you know, some, this one is Luxor temple. This one is Karnat temple. You will come back on board, uh, you know, and you will have your dinner and there will be overnight on day four. In the in, you will have again breakfast in the morning and then you will take the guide will come and take you. As a matter of fact, what happens is that when you, you know, your guide in Cairo will say goodbye to you at Cairo airport when you're going to Luxor. When you are at Luxor airport, there'll be a guide inside who will wait for you and inside the airport, he will take you to the coach and he will say goodbye to you. That's why I said a lot of tips, you know, so he expects you to give him a dollar, you know, and then he will say goodbye to you and another guide who will take you in the coach. And that guy remains with you until you will fly out of a swan after four nights in the cruise. So that guy is going to stay with you. This guy is going to be with you on the cruise ship also. He will be, uh, you know, taking you to the to the uh, Luxor and the Kurna Temple on day three. On day four, he's going to take you to the Valley of the Kings and the Valley of the Queens. And these guides are just fabulous. They are very professional very, very helpful kind of guys that I've seen anywhere in the world. And I've been to 58 countries and and I don't know how many cities. I just lost the count. Um, you will also be taken to the Hatshepsut's temple, which is the only women pharaoh in the history of Egypt. You'll be taken to her temple also. The picture is right on the top over here. You'll come back for lunch and afternoon. The cruise will sail after you've stayed there one night to Etfu. Why it's not. You will have dinner on board. This picture at the bottom is a small swimming pool on top of the cruise ship that you have. This picture over here is inside the Valley of the King, one of the king's chamber. The paint from 3,200 years before Christ is still, as you can see, the way it is. On day four, though, before you go on the strip, you have an optional tour if you wish to. For $150 per person, you will do a hot air balloon over the valley at sunrise. And if you can really afford it, it's highly recommend that you do it. It is just unthinkable, beautiful, breathtaking, you know, uh, scenery and um, what you will experience through this. Uh, they will pick you up very early in the morning, approximately five in the morning, and you will have to then uh, come back in time for a breakfast uh, so that you will then carry on with your other tours. On day five, we are, we have already sailed and we are going to Itfu and Komombo. These are the temples because now you are sailing on Nile and you will stop in between. You will visit the temple of Itfu. Then you will sail to Komombo on the same day and you will visit the, the temple of the Komombo and some of the pictures appear over here. You see, in this picture, you really cannot appreciate. But imagine that when you are standing in this temple at the bottom, and you're, you are looking at a column of this one column over here, which is made of pure stones, which is, you know, 20 size, uh, twenty times the size of us, you know, human being. 
you will be wondering how did they built it back, you know, in 3000 and 2500 years before Christ. So it's very easy. And on top of it, they decorated with it all the designs and the carving and the stories and things of the sort. It's not something that I can express in word enough for you to understand what you're going to experience. It is something that you need to go and really see it. On day five in the evening, the cruise will have your in-house Galabia party. Now, what is Galabia? Galabia is that Arabic, you know, dress. The men is like this and the women, as you can see. This is an actual picture that I have taken when I have taken some of the chamber executives on a familization trip and we mixed up with all. So, you know, all these are the, the American and um, Canadian girls over here. And we had a fantastic time in the Galabia party. And, you know, uh, it happens on the fifth night. Uh, before we arrive in a swan. All right, let's move on. Sorry, I, we don't have a lot of time for that. Um, on day six, you will be arriving in a swan. After breakfast, you will do the high dam of a swan, uh, you know, which is very, very important commercially for the uh, for the hydropower that is. And just now, you know, there is a there is a kind of war, a cold war going on between Ethiopia and um, and Egypt, you know, on because Ethiopia is now building, they've almost completed another dam, which will reduce the water coming into this dam and things of the sort. Any, I'll not go into these details. You'll also do the Temple of Phile, which is a beautiful temple on an island. And you go to that temple by doing a small boat ride like this over here. So this boat ride, again, you have a boat driver. And he's looking at your face and I mean, you need to give him like two pounds, which is like 70 cents, you know, per person. That's why I said, you know, a lot of tripping, but he'll be happy looking at that beautiful smiling face. You'll be happy to give them, you know, 70 cents every time that you go there. On day seven, you will fly back from Aswan to Cairo. And before you do that, there is actually an optional tour going to Abu Sembel Temple. That temple is actually uh, from Aswan. You have to take a round trip flight, which takes you very early in the morning. You have to wake up at four. They take you, they fly you. You visit the temple of the Ramses and the Queen Nefertiti, and then you come back and they will fly you back from again Cairo airport back, uh, sorry, from Aswan airport back to Cairo. The rest of the people who are not going, uh, they will fly from Cairo, from Aswan back to Cairo. Here is a small picture that you can see uh, that we started in Cairo. We did, you know, our, we flew into Luxor somewhere here where my mouse is. Then you came by cruise down here and then you, you're flying back to Cairo over here for approximately one hour and 25 minutes flight back into one hour and 45 minutes going one hour and 25 minutes coming into Luxor. Day seven, you are in Cairo and you will be doing the tour of the Citadel, the mosque and the Kankalili. Kankali, the, the very popular bazaar, uh, which was done in the Fatimid, um, you know, era of the dynasty of Fatimids over here. Uh, after a person whose name was Khalili, last name, I don't know his first name, and it still exists from that time, from 17th century until now. They will do, a, there is a lot of bargaining, but your guide will again, you know, guide you. There's a lot of silver, beautiful, you know, um, jewelry that is available. They can carve your name instantly over there and give it to you. But if they tell you $100, you have to start with 30. So, you know, you have to go down from 100 to 30, and then you will somewhere, you know, come at 40, 45, $50 where you will buy it. Uh, so you have a lot of, you know, uh, negotiation and a lot of, you know, bargaining has to be done in order to do that. Uh, a tour of the pyramid will happen on day eight. And again, this is something I cannot express in words alone. Each single pyramid is built of 2 million and 300, 2, 2.2 million and 300,000 blocks and average weight of each of this block is 2.5 ton, two and a half ton. I'm sitting on top of one of the blocks you can see over here. When you actually look at this pyramid, where the geometry, the 180 degree line can be defined by looking at this pyramid, you will, your mind will stop working. How did they do it back in 3000 before Christ, you know, and they were able to put these stones, no matter how many movies you've seen, no matter how much I describe over here, you know, they will be, you will not be able to grasp it unless you stand at the bottom of this pyramid and really, you know, see what are you looking at. This is the Sphinx. And actually I'm not doing putting, you know, a huge stone on my hand. These are the smart camel drivers, you know, I spoke to you about, 
uh, you know, they will just, you know, give you a small pebble in your hand and they will take a picture from your own camera and make it appear like this. And they will be expecting a dollar from you. But I'm very happy to give them this dollar again. Okay, this is the existing Cairo Museum, which we will be doing. But these pictures are of the existing museum. We do not know how the new museum is going to look. But this is what you will also do after lunch. So you will be doing the first thing is the pyramids in the morning. Then you will do either take a short break. If the premise is taking a longer time, then perhaps, you know, your guide you will tell you, okay, have your lunch. He may, you know, guide you where to go for lunch. And post lunch or post the break, you will then go back to the museum. So what did we cover? We are spending first night in Cairo, where you are resting. Then you are flying. Now you can, now you can really appreciate it, this map. You're flying into Luxor over here. And you are spending four nights on that cruise. From Luxor, you are doing the Udfu, the Komambo, until you arrive in Aswan. Uh, these are your four nights spent. You're doing all the Valley of the King, the Queens, all the most important temples. Then you fly back from Aswan back into Cairo. You will do two nights in Cairo in the same hotel, the Schneider Hotel, which I've shown you the picture in the beginning. You will do the Cairo Museum. You'll do the pyramids. You will do the Khan Khalili Bazaar. You will do the uh, the Citadel and things of the sort. Um, you know, in your two days of stay in Cairo. We may change the order, though. At the present moment, I'm telling you, we'll do the pyramid and the um, uh, and the museum on the last day. But your guide may decide that he wants to do it upon your arrival in Cairo and keep the Kanga Lili Bazaar on the last day. The reason being, because you will be doing some shopping, you know, in Kanga Lili Bazaar, so you want to keep it maybe at the end, after you have seen the pyramids. So, you know, this order may change, but it doesn't really affect you. It's still, you are still going to do all the tours that I have, uh, that we promised you to do. On day nine, you will be transferred to Cairo Airport and you come back to Pittsburgh. Extension, Dubai extension. And I will be very quick with this. You will be transferred from Cairo Airport to, for the people who are doing, taking the extension, um, you know, on day one of your trip, which is day nine of the total trip. Upon arrival, you'll be transferred to your hotel rest of the day at leisure and overnight at your hotel in Dubai. Um, Cairo, Dubai, your optional Dubai extension is a five day trip. And, um, you know, upon arrival, like I told you, you'll be transferred to the hotel. The hotel that you're staying is called the Al Sif Heritage Hotel in Dubai, which is a Julio collection by Hilton in the sense that this is an old city town of uh, Dubai which has been converted into a beautiful four and a half star hotel, as you can see over here. These windows are from whatever, 16th, 17th century, these rooms, but they have mixed the modern hotel facility into the old structure by rebranding this entire thing. It's a beautiful hotel to stay at if you're going there. On day two, which is day 10, you will be doing a short city tour of Dubai in the morning. Uh, the rest of the day is at a leisure because there's a lot of things that you can do in, your, in Dubai on your own. Or you can take an optional Dow Cruise dinner for $70 per person in the evening. And I'll show you how does the create. Oh, before that, let me go back again. Sorry, because you must look at what are we looking at. So this is the Jumeirah Mosque over here, the Spice Bazaar, the Spice Souk over here, the Bastakia town, the Gold Souk, the world famous Gold Souk, where you have the gold by tons and tons without any specific security. You'll be amazed in how much gold is the, in those in that Dubai Bazaar is over here. You will also be looking at a panoramic view of the seven star hotel, the only two seven star hotels in the world, both in UAE, one in Dubai, one in Abu Dhabi, which is this hotel over here, the Al Burj. You know the um, the hotel over here. Also, the uh, external extension of the Dow Cruise, which is the evening cruise. These are some of the pictures. This this will be done in the canal in Dubai. Uh, so you have, you know, the the buildings on both the sides and the, the pools. It's a nice experience if you want to do it, um, you know, and it costs you $70 per person. On day three, which is day 11 of the tour, you will you will have the day at leisure or you have two optional tours that you can, uh, you know, choose from. In your tour, you did not do the modern Dubai because modern Dubai is quite very large. It's not possible to do in one tour, which is the other side of Dubai which includes, you know, your Burj Khalifa, the tallest building of the world, as you can see over here, with the, you know, the fountains over here, with the musical fountains, you know, which they say is even better than, I have not seen this after they have installed it, but they say it's even better than Las Vegas. Uh, you will be doing the Dubai Mall, you will be doing the Palm. Uh, this is a, a city created out of, the, out of the sea, as you can see, in the shape of the Palm. Um, you know, you'll be doing this. 
this mall, Dubai Mall, has got the largest aquarium anywhere in the face of the world inside the mall and all that. Or you can also do a full Dubai export ticket uh, for $30. The transfer is not included because when you will arrive there, the Dubai export, they are still calling it 2020, but they have, they have postponed it from 2020 to 2021. 56 nations of the world come and they participated this Dubai export, something amazing. You can Google it. I don't have time to give you more details on this, unfortunately. On day four, uh, you know, you a morning at leisure in the afternoon, what is included for you is a dessert safari with barbecue dinner. Now you wonder what is a safari and it's a dessert. So what happens is they take you either, either in a Nissan Safari, the largest four wheel drive car or a Toyota, uh, what car is that? I'm forgetting the name, but the largest Toyota four wheel drive. And these expert drivers, and I was one, uh, once upon a time, I, I used to do this by myself also. Uh, so they take you onto the huge sand dunes and they go in such a fast action on those dunes that you actually get the feeling of doing, uh, you know, a safari or a, a, you know, roller coaster ride. It's not meant for the faint hearted. And, you know, they take you. But of course, if you tell your driver that, sorry, I don't want to experience the worst of it, then he will be careful and, you know, uh, but this is something worth doing. Dubai is not complete without you having done this. When you're done with this, they will bring you in the middle of a desert in a camp, which is set, and they will serve you with the barbecue dinner, and there will be some, you know, henna painting in your hand, some camel rides, you know, which will offer you on things of the sort. That's happened. And you can buy your drinks over there. Alcoholic drinks are available at this campsite also, if you want to do that. Uh, on day five of your extension, you will be transferred back to Dubai airport, and you will fly back to Pittsburgh. I'm not going to read this, but I will send this in an email to Brianna. But this is Christopher Cooney, who is the president and a CEO of, you know, he's one of the who's who in the in the chairman industry from uh, uh, from Boston, from Metro South Chamber of Farmers. He wasn't with on the trip with me and he's spoken a lot of good things about the trip and our organization. I don't have time to read it, but I'll share this with Brianna and maybe she can send it across to you later. Who is in this travel? We are a small tour group company. When we say small tour group, it does not mean we are a small company. We are a large company, sizable company. But when we organize a trip, a, a tr group tour, we do not believe in making the group sizes bigger because we believe by making a group size very huge, you know, either you have one or two spoilers, you know, who will not be able to every day late, uh, not coming in time, or you are not able to hear the guide and things of the sort. So, you know, we will give you a small group of not exceeding 20 or 30 people. If you happen to be 42 people, we'll split you in two coaches, two guides, and things of the sort. Privately owned independent business, therefore the decisions are quick. For example, you went to Portugal and you wanted to stay back in Portugal or you wanted to hop into Spain, the neighboring Spain. We can do a quick decision and we'll tell you, our people will tell you how much is the additional, what is the calculation, we'll not say no to you. Very expert, you know, um, and knowledgeable team. Altogether, we have like 210 years of experience between the product, the operation, and the sales. I come with more than 20 years of experience, some of the best airlines of the world and, you know, around the globe and things of the sort. We are 20 years in business, established back in, back in 20, uh, 2001. Uh, many genuinely, uh, you know, industry recognized consumer protections that we have. On Triple B, we are an A plus rating company. I'm sorry, I'm speaking fast, but I have to. And our rating and ranking is maintained by an independent company called FIFO. This is now a company, you know, which is maintaining rent rating of many different companies independently. That means if you give us a good testimonial, our rating will go higher. But by the same token, if you get something bad, it can come down. But touch wood, we are holding on to a five-star category for almost four years on this FIFO, uh, you know, thing which maintains our, uh, uh, you know, our rating and ranking over here. Booking, how do you do? You have an online booking option, which Brianna has got. Portugal is not yet ready, but I should be able to hand it over to her by, by Brianna by Monday to you. But, you know, if you want to book your Egypt, you can do it online. And she has got a link which she can share with you. Uh, you can also do a manual form, which I will be, uh, you know, emailing to Brianna by tomorrow. Uh, you can look at an online booking, you know, online link, a complete detail of the tour, more than the brochure. For example, in the brochure, we have not included, because there's no space, the picture of the hotels, for example, 
Uh, but on your online link, you will be able to look at the picture of the hotel, one internal or external. You can enter your personal details, your name, your date of birth, your passport details and all that. You can pay deposits. You can make your balance payments all online. We will accept your credit card without charging any extra fee for the credit card. Only Visa and Master American Express is not expert. And on top of it, we also have got two dedicated consultants for you at our head office. One is called Benoit, who will take care of Egypt. And sorry, the other person, Benoit will take care of, this is a typo. Uh, Benoit will take care of Portugal. And this is an extension. Again, uh, uh, Brian has got the details over here. And this is his email. So you can, you know, communicate with him either on the toll free number or an email. And he'll be happy to do things for you. Anoop is somebody who will take care of your Egypt trip. His extension number is 910 and the noise is 862 on a toll fee number. Local currency, obviously in uh, Europe, when you go to Portugal, it's Euro. So one US dollar as of today is 0.84 euros. Uh, Egyptian pound as of today is 15.63 Egyptian pounds. Uh, and it usually fluctuates when it comes to e Egypt. Euro does not fluctuate a lot, as you know, uh, but your Egyptian point by, by the time next year you will go, perhaps it'll become 16 or 16.5. So it's only going downwards. That means you're getting more in Egyptian currency, not less. Um, changing money, credit cards and ATMs, both the countries, you have you know banks that, give, that can be found in most cities. Many hotels offer you currency exchange. ATMs can be found, so you do not really need to carry cash with you. Uh, we don't recommend because you know with these you know ATMs available, as and when you need, just go and withdraw some cash. The only thing is that, Instead of doing a daily, you may want to do it for two, three days at one because there will be some charges involved. But the ATM is available. Your guide will be able to, you know, tell you where to go and make your withdrawal of your cash if you need, um, you know, and then you can do that. Credit cards are usually accepted in large shops in Egypt, but in Portugal is accepted anywhere and everywhere almost. But when it comes to Egypt, larger shops will accept. But if you go to Khan Khalili Bazaar, they are not accepting a credit card. You will require some cash for it. I will not talk about the, you know, the uh, the clothing in, in Portugal because pretty much same as us over here. But when it comes to Egypt, when you are going to the religious sites, generally, uh, keep loose fittings, shoulders and below the knee covering is, you know, is requested and is respected. Um, you know, uh, you, can, you don't have to, you know, wear it, but you can carry it that when you are entering into a mosque or you know, into whatever places that you're going, you may be required. And if you don't have one, they will give you something, you know, just cover your, uh, just below your knee and your shoulders and things of the sort, but not necessary. Uh, your guide will listen. Sunscreens, hats, sunglasses, sturdy shoes, you know, are uh, some handy kit items that you need to carry for both the trips. Uh, drink bottled water only when it comes to Egypt uh, and including do not have any ice from the public places. In your hotel is fine. When I mean, your cruise is fine. When we are public places, because ice is made from the tap water and you are not immune to that tap water. So you just drink the bottled water or you can have your pops and whatever that you can buy, um, you know, and you can marry uh, cooked food or the boiled food. Even the street food is fine. As a matter of fact, the kushari place that I'm going to recommend to, uh, what's her name, to Brianna is a street food, but it's a small restaurant, but it's fine. As far as you eat cooked food, it's fine. When it comes to drinking, drink bottled water. There is something called lemon drink by Schweppes. And there is, for some reason, it's an amazing drink and it's not, not available anywhere else except it's made locally in Egypt. When we left Egypt last time from the trip, each one of us bought 10 cans of that drink and we bought it with us. It is that very interesting, just for information. Um, tipping in Portugal. 10% tipping, generally speaking, when you're having a meal outside and think tour guide and driver, approximately four to five euros per day. And to your hotel porters, you can give them one or two euros as you wish. Coming to, to Egypt, uh, you know, bellman at the hotel, you can give about one dollar a piece in Egypt. Drivers per transfer, about a dollar one. Driver with full day tour who's staying with you, two dollars. Guides per day, four to five dollars. It's up to you. Nine crews staff per day, you can collect, make it a collection together, make an envelope. Brian, I can carry it for you. I would say just to put about $5 for your five days collective thing. And you know, the, hand, the, the envelope can be handed over at the reception and they will then distribute. Local restaurants per meal, about a dollar. Hotel restaurants, you know, 
uh, which I'm talking about, you know, your Steinberg, uh, Steinberg Hotel or anything, approximately $2 is more than that. Tipping is personal expense and it's up to each individual. Uh, you will decide, this is only our guideline, but if you want to decide on your own, be our guest, you know, we are, no problem. Uh, when it comes to uh, Portugal, you do not require a visa. I've already explained to you $25 in cash for Egypt. Uh, at this point in time, the vaccination is in full swing in both the countries. Uh, Portugal is already coming in the safe countries, you know, uh, list pretty soon. Uh, Egypt is half the way there, but your trip is not going until October. Plus, you have a 90 days, uh, until 90 days before departure, a money back guarantee. Uh, but in spite of that, I very highly recommend that you always buy a travel insurance, including the trip interruption. What is trip interruption? For example, that you you booked your trip and you paid the money, and just 15 days before departure, God forbid something bad happened in your family, somebody died, you broke your arm or leg or something happened, and your trip is now interrupted, this insurance company will you know deduct your premium and will give the rest of the money back to you for a genuine reason. COVID is not, it is not included in most of this, uh, you know, insurance, unless if you can dig one and find one, you know, uh, then do that. Finally, luggage, like I told you, 23 kilos, one key piece of uh, bag will be allowed with one carry on, unless if the rules changes, by the way, uh, you know, by the time we fly uh, in April to Portugal and in, um, uh, in uh, October to Egypt. I'm not sure if the sound is going to come to you, but I will play this one and a half minute of video for you on Egypt. So that was my presentation. If you have any questions, please, uh, you can type. I'm going to exit from this uh, screen now and I can go back to my original screen. Uh, I hope I made some sense. Sorry, I took a bit longer. I tried my level best not to take, but you know, I was, it was just not possible. I'm so sorry. Um, let me just go back. Okay. There's no question so far. That means I did a fantastic job, it seems. Yeah. But if people have questions um, that they can't think of now or they don't ask now, you can um, you know call me or email me and I can, you know, I can always get the answers for you. Okay, for sure. Okay. What size planes from US to uh, Egypt? Uh, the usual size. If you flew Emirates, uh, you will be flying an Airbus 340, for example, the largest aircraft. Uh, from New York or from Washington or from Boston, for example. If you flew Egypt Air 777, for example, or an Airbus uh, 78, uh, sorry, an, uh, Boeing 787, the Dreamliner, for example. So our modern big aircraft, nothing is small. The smallest that you can have will be an Airbus 320, which is still a, a comfortable aircraft. That was a question coming from Kathy with C. Okay, I'll give 20 more seconds. If there are no more questions coming, then we will end the session. It has gone very long, um, you know, already. So I thank you. In the meanwhile, that I'm waiting for any questions. Thank you again, Brianna. Thank you all the participants who have been patiently looking at my presentation. 
I would love to see your comments, you know, and what do you think of the presentation if you have any, um, you know, and uh, I sincerely hope that you will book these two I, or one of them, whatever you like, fantastic trip is going for $18.99 for an eight day beautiful Portugal trip. And it is for twenty eight uh, two thousand eight hundred forty seven dollars uh, which is the uh, Egypt and nine day in which you are included with a four night beautiful Nile cruise on a five star. These are really very, very attractive prices and I sincerely hope that you will be to take them. Thank you so much. You have a great night, everybody. Night, see ya. Bye now.